Jesus, Jesus, you have won. That's what we call you. Jesus, Jesus, lift up your voice and say, born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You have won it all for me.
Praise the Lord, everybody. It is indeed a privilege and an honor that you have chosen to join us today. Whether you are viewing from our Facebook page, our website, or even YouTube, we welcome you in Jesus' name. My prayer is that you are encouraged and strengthened, even empowered, healed, delivered. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give the Lord our and praise? Today. So sit back For the Lord has risen. We're so glad he's alive. He's alive and well. Come on, right where you are in your living room. As we enter into the sanctuary. He's alive. He's alive. Jesus is alive. For you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Come on, right where you are, let's sing that. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along like stairway. Oh, he lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Oh, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Oh, he lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. Oh, he lives. Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks, he walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, he lives, he lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know. Come on, right where you are, put your hands together and give the Lord praise. For he came to heaven, to earth, just to show us all the way. From the earth to the cross, our debts he paid. We ask that you join us right from your home with praise and worship. Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high, Lord, I love to sing your praises, I'm so glad you're in my life, I'm so glad you came to save us, Lord, I lift, Lord, I lift your name on high. I'm so very glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. So very glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My dead, my pain. From the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Hallelujah. 
We come to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, I live. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I live. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so very glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. So very glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show, show the way from the earth to the cross. My death, my death you paid from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, you came, you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death, you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, you came, you came from heaven to earth. All the way from the earth to the cross, my death you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Put your hands together. Lord, I lift your name on high. You came from heaven, you came from heaven to work to show the way from the earth to the cross. My name, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, you came, you came from heaven to work to show. lift him on high because he is the living word he's the living word carpenter 
You are the living word Awesome ruler Gentle redeem God with us The living truth And what a friend We have in you you are the living word, bread of heaven, yeah. Bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Sent down from glory. Many things, many things you were on earth. A holy king, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living, you word. Are the living word, bread of heaven. Send down from glory, Send down from glory, many things, many things, oh, yeah. on earth. a holy, a king, holy king, a carpenter. A carpenter. You are the living word, you are the living well, awesome word. ruler, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, gentle redeemer. God with us, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we all have in you. You are, you are the we're awesome ruler, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, gentle redeemer. God with us, the living truth. God with us, the living truth. And what a friend we have in you. You are everybody, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. That's what we call you. Jesus, Jesus. Major born on the street. You died to save, to save humanity. humanity. You are the living word. You are the living Jesus, word. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. That's yeah. what we call you. Manger born. Manger born. But on the tree. You died, you died to save oh, humanity. Yeah. One more time, but Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. That's what we call you. Major boy, major boy, but oh, yeah. you died to save humanity. But you are the living word. Oh, Jesus, 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 that's what we call that's you.
are the living word. You are the living word. You are the living word. Yes. You are the living word. You are the living word. Yes, you are. You are the living word. You are the living word. Oh, you are the living word. 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 Oh, yes, you are. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. One writer said, Great is thy faithfulness. We give him honor and praise. And just before we move into the word of God, I want to thank those who have the ministry of music, we thank God for you and your sacrifice. We praise God. May we bow our heads. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we do honor you. We do thank you for your love, your kindness, your grace, and your tender mercy. During such a time as this, we thank you that your hand is upon our lives. You said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you, that I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. Bless us as we praise your name, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to look at a verse of Scripture. And when I ask you to look at it, I'm going to say many things. You may wonder at the beginning, where is he going with that? You will see as you hold fast to the Scripture. Genesis 3 and 15. Genesis 3 and 15. Some of you may know it by heart. Verse number 15 of Genesis chapter 3. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And just to read for the sake of this occasion, and not only will I say something in regards to the occasion, which is Resurrection Sunday, but there will be some other things that I will say by the help and grace of Almighty God. Note, if you will, in Matthew and chapter 27, and picking the reading up in verse 52, 51. And behold, the veil in the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many and so much for the occasion and the occasion is he has risen the Lord 
has risen indeed. We call this Resurrection Sunday. And we're grateful unto the Lord that we can celebrate in that respect. And because he got up, my brothers and sisters, I would have us understand it is a blessing to all of us. But I want to give you a subject for what we're about to speak on. And the subject is the silencing of the gods. The silencing of the gods. Thank God for his word. I began to make preparation for what I was going to say this Resurrection Sunday. You see, a lot of things took place. A lot of things that uh, outside of the Lord getting up. There's a multiplicity of things that were accomplished. Not only did he say, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. There are times when the Lord binds the devil, binds his actions in order First of all, for him to keep quiet so God's people can hear his voice. The silencing of the gods. I bring your attention. You won't have to turn back to the book of Exodus and those early chapters of Exodus leading up to chapter 12. But there were ten plagues, amen, that are outlined in Scripture. And I want to just recite them if I can. The first plague was of the blood, the frogs, the lice, the flies, the livestock, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and the death of the firstborn. When the Lord was about to do something for his people, he first silenced the gods. The Egyptian culture was made up of false gods. No doubt there were thousands of gods. This is a deterrent. It gets the minds of people off of God and the true God and what God wants to do. So there are times, again, when the Lord wants to speak, he's got to tell the devil, hush. Be quiet. I would have you understand as we note the word, the first plague was that turning the water into blood. You see, they worshipped the Nile. The Nile River, they looked forward to it overflowing its banks and dropping the rich soil upon the land. It enriched their land. They deemed the Nile a god. Thus says the Lord, By this ye shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will strike the water that is in the Nile with the staff, that is in my hand and it will be turned to blood 
the fish that are in the Nile will die. And the Nile will become foul. And the Egyptians will find difficulty in drinking water from the Nile. This is Exodus chapter 7, verses 17 and 18. Can you imagine something so important to them they deemed it a god? How repulsive that is in the face of God. He made the Nile. I want you to know that God's creation is separate from who he is. Some people can say, well, I see God in the trees. No, you can't. You see his creation. It takes faith to see God. So what the Lord is doing one by one as he gathers and deals with these gods, he is silencing them. He is telling these gods, Hush, I'm about to speak. I'm about to do something great in the sight of my people. I'm about to show the Egyptians who the true God is. Can you imagine having your God turn on you with stench? When the fish were killed, because the Lord turned that water into blood. The fish died. If you've ever smelled the foulness of dead fish, you can understand what I mean. But the Lord had to do this in order for the people to turn themselves from their God. My, my. The Bible teaches us on another occasion, and I won't deal with all of them, but in Exodus chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, and the Lord spake to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go. Now this is something, can you imagine? This mere man, armed with the true and the living God, the Lord is asking him to go before the highest man in the land of Egypt. Tell him to let my people go. I wish I had my staff. I have one in my office. I would demonstrate to a point. He was a little reluctant at first because of his speech, his impediment, and just because he tended sheep for 40 years for his father-in-law. But God wanted him to go before Pharaoh. And he was reluctant, and he was so reluctant, he got the Lord's attention. And the Lord said, what's in your hand? All I have is this staff. He said, throw it down. And he threw it down and it turned into a snake. You know the story. And he did this in the presence of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh sort of snapped his fingers and looked at his magicians and told them, do likewise. And they did it. And the way the Lord showed that he's the true and the living God and how he silenced the gods. He had Moses' snake eat up the snake of the magicians. Isn't God wonderful? When he wants the attention, he's got to close the mouths of the gods. They must be rendered silent. He's God Almighty. When he walks in the room, he gathers the attention of everybody. Listen. And I want you to understand, huh? This second play was frogs. Can you imagine? And I've said it before frogs in your house. Can you imagine getting tired of your God? 
Frogs in your house, frogs in your car, frogs in your bed when your body was tired. Frogs in the kitchen. Open the oven. Frogs in the oven. Frogs in the refrigerator. Amen. They had it up to here with one of their gods because the Lord killed the frogs. Then they gathered the frogs into heat, great heaps, and the stench went throughout Egypt. My, my, my. God knows how to silence, silence the gods. I'm talking about the true and the living God knows how to close the mouths of false gods. They might have eyes, but they can't see. They may have ears, but they can't hear. They may have crafted a mouth, you see, in stone or in wood, but they can't talk. Yet men can't hear the voice of God and that he loves them because of the voices of the gods. So he's got to silence the gods. Now the scripture goes on not only about the frogs, but it talks about the lice. It talks about flies. It talks about their livestock. Yes, cows and camels and lambs and goats. They were afflicted, if you will. Amen. Can you imagine a country that believes the cow is a god? Egypt's god was livestock. It was a cow. It was a lamb, if you will. But I would have you understand the Lord's got to Quiet them down. Amen. Not only that, there were boils. There was a plague of hail, locusts, darkness. And finally, mm, there was a plague on the firstborn because even Pharaoh was worshipped. God took his firstborn, both man and beast, throughout all of Egypt. That was the last straw. The Lord wants to speak. Can you imagine? People are listening to church music because they can't go to the theater. People are listening to messages from preachers and reading their books because they can't do otherwise the things that they're used to doing. There are times, and this is one of the most difficult things about our flesh, we don't want to sit down and listen. Sometimes we're fearful of hearing from God. But out of the midst of the clamor, whatever God you might have, the Lord knows how to quail that voice. He knows how to silence that God. Never before in my history, I've been here 76 years, never before have I seen the Lord do like this. Hush! He did it, and it's all over the world. Everybody has to be quiet because the king is here. The king is in the house. My, my, my. It makes me think I was in London on occasion. And I was in Herod's, the department store. And they told me when the queen comes in on the first floor, they begin to whisper, the queen is in the house. The queen is in the house. Everybody is at attention and on their best. 
It goes up to the second floor and to the third floor. The queen is in the house. I want you to know the king is in the house. The Lord is here and he's speaking. And it's not that he's raising his voice. He's been talking to us, but we can't hear what he's saying because we're listening to the other gods. They have our attention. They have our schedules. He's speaking, and the people don't hear. My, my, I want you to use your thoughts. The government has its thumbs under its lapels. I'm not back in Egypt now. I'm talking about our government. It's thumbing its lapels. Look at us. We even have spots here and there where there can't be any reference to God. Look at us. We're that free and loose. We can say what we want to say, do what we want to do without any hindrance from God. Shame on you. God is silencing. You know people want prayer now? They want anybody that knows the worth of prayer, they want them to pray to their God, to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power. They want anybody that can get through to God. Pray that the Lord will touch my body and rid me of this fever, of this pain and discomfort. God knows how to quiet the gods. No government is going to step in now, amen, and tell you you can't pray. Hmm. I look at another god here, and that's the world of entertainment. Hmm. That excludes God, the world of entertainment. And that's vast. Let me try to pinpoint an item or two. Can I step on this big God? Okay, it's the God of professional sports. That's right, the preacher said professional sports is a God. And it is. But I've noticed something. What is happening uh, around this country and around the world, he has silence. Professional sports. There's nobody in the bleachers. There's no cheering. There's no big money making. Some folks are worried. But the Lord has quailed them. What is he doing? Be quiet. I've got something to say. Well, we have a hush. I've got the whole world listening to me. And you are not exempt because your brilliant way of making money. You don't know what you're doing. They tell me that if a professional team is in a particular city and they have an early game, the pastor has to change the hours of the church service. And the people come in their jerseys and pom-poms. And if the preacher's too long, they tip out. And they go play homage to their God. And it's all right to have a morning service, but don't you dare have an evening service. No, 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 no. That evening service belongs to professional sports. Bambi can't even get in there. It's professional sports. 
They are so rich that anybody else that makes a bid, professional sports can outbid them because of the billions of dollars that they have. But you know what he's doing to them? Hush. Well, I'll take it to court. We have a hush. Sometimes he's got to silence the gods in order for people to hear what he's saying. I hear you, Jesus. My, my. It's important to realize, oh, people of God, the Lord has something to say. This is one of the great days out of the year. And men are not concerned about its greatness. And I say this to the world, don't you know the night before the crucifixion of Christ, they whipped him. They whipped him with leather straps. And at the end of the leather straps were sharp pieces of metal or sharp pieces of glass. And whoever's job it was, they were real good. They learned the professional way how to whip the opponent, to whip the person that has been condemned. And they whipped the Lord the night before, and they had a way of doing it and cracking it. Many times it would wrap around their midsection, and he would pull on it. And the glass and the metal would dig into the flesh of whoever the victim was. It was a bloody mess. The world hasn't been able to hear it. Have you ever been in a situation where you hear and you don't hear? Maybe because you hear it all the time and the effect is gone. Maybe because you used to participate in the church and you don't go anymore. It's important for us to understand God knows how to get your attention. He wants you to know I bled for you. I kept my mouth closed while they flogged me. That blood that came from my body was for your covering with your ungodliness. The blood that came when the whipper dug into my flesh and many people died because of the flogging. But I want you to know that blood also will cleanse you from your sins. You don't have to live in condemnation. You don't have to lay awake at night because you're thinking about your sins and one day having to stand before a just God. His blood that came from his body not only will cover you, but will cleanse you from all your sins. I hear you, angels. The angels, according to Scripture, they're here. They desire to look into what we take for granted. The angels want to listen to it. They haven't been spirit-filled. They haven't been washed in the blood. They want to know about it. So they come to church when the church people come to church. They listen intensively when the preacher preaches about the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Well, amen. They took him down in the following day. They nailed him to a cross. Oh, yes. They drove the spikes through his flesh. A lot of people hear and they don't hear because they don't stop and take the time to listen to his suffering. It's loud and clear. The suffering of Jesus. 
But when one's mind is already on another God, the other gods make so much noise, you can't hear what the true and the living God is saying. So the Lord is the Lord of all. He knows how to silence the gods. Hallelujah. The next day they nailed him to a cross. Oh, yes, they did. They stripped his clothes from him. My, my, you never thought about that, did you? Because you were carried away with what you were doing with your God and with your gods. But in order for the Lord to show his love, I know he died at Calvary, but we're not listening to Calvary. I know he rose on the third day, but we're still not listening to what the word says about his resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So he has to quail the voices of the other gods. Shut them down. He loves us so much he wants us to hear him. When they lifted the cross up and let it down in that ditch and stabilized it, it ripped his flesh. He suffered for us. The Bible says, and I'll paraphrase it, they sat down and looked at him. In other words, they sat down and watched the greatest show on earth. The Lamb of God being slain right before their eyes. And he did not defend himself. This is the reason I came into the world. To this end was I born. In other words, I came here to do what you're looking at. I came here to die. And I came here to die because I love you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But in order for him to get his message out for a moment. And I know we can't wait to get back on our schedules. We can't wait to congregate. We can't wait to run to and fro. We can't wait to start making more money. But hush! Listen to him. He's trying to get your attention. He doesn't shut down the world every day. But he took time to shut it down for you. My, 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 my. Listen to the Lord. He's speaking. And when the king speaks, it's greater than E.F. Hutton. Everybody from the White House to the Capitol ought to listen when he speaks. He could do this every day, but every now and then the Lord gets the attention of mankind. And when he speaks, you better listen. Hallelujah. Can't you hear him? He's speaking and he's clear. If you feel any remorse, you heard him. If you feel any condemnation, it's coming through. Now hold tight. When you punch the clock again and the elevator starts to move and the stores and the mall begin to turn on their lights, don't forget God. 
He stopped the world for you. Did you hear what I said? He stopped the world that you might hear him. He's saying, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'm meek and I'm lowly. I'm not like they say I am. They're telling lies on me. I belong in your home. I belong on your job. I belong in your educational system. I belong in your medical positions. I belong in every phase and facet of your living. They're lying on me. They're telling you there's a place where you don't have to put up with God. I've stopped the world for you. I love you that much. Now, mind you, a time is coming when I'll push the button of my word and you'll hear the clanging of the wheels of the trains and the automobiles. People will start their computers about their schedules. Amen. They'll open the doors of the banks so you can go on the ground floor or the mezzanine and you'll be able to trade on Wall Street absolutely and make money hand over fist. But I warn you, don't forget God. Never forget him. And never forget this message. Never forget this day on Resurrection Celebration Sunday. I want you to always remember God stopped the world for you. That you might hear him. He did something that's too hard for you to do. And that is silence the gods. They've got you bound and fettered. They put you on a schedule. They take your money. They take your time. You can't even worship God. And you can't wait for the button to be pushed. Shame on us. This is the time to wake up to the voice and call of God. Start with your youngest. Tell them about Jesus. There are churches almost in every neighborhood. Make sure they hear the story of Jesus. Support that church that's preaching the word of God. Encourage those that help the poor. Amen. Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was in prison and you came to see about me. I was sick and you visited me. Amen. Let me tell you, Jesus is hungry. We ought to be feeding Jesus. Jesus is in prison. We ought to be going to see about him. Can you hear the Lord talking? He's saying the same thing but it's been so noisy we haven't been able to hear him because of the mouths of the gods. And he has told the gods of this world, hush, my love is stronger than who you are and I've shut it down. I've shut it down so my people can hear my voice so they can make a choice whether to follow a false god and put him first or to follow the true and the living god.
Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. That's what we want. It's not because you worked all day and you're tired. It's the sin element in our lives. That'll beat you up one side and down another. We need sin to be arrested. Put out of business when it comes to our lives and the lives of our families. My, my, can't you hear him calling? The Lord is speaking to us. What is happening is historical. Never before has this happened, at least in our lifetime. But the Lord is speaking to us now. And he wants us to respond to him. I read from Matthew, and I close out with these thoughts. Something took place to stop the world. When Jesus was crucified at Calvary, everything stopped. He stopped the religious worship when he tore the veil from top to bottom. Prior to that, he even threw the people out of the worship area. Drove out the money changers. Look, when you're getting ready to move out of a building to another building, you clean up where you've been living. And that's what he did. He cleaned up his house because he was going to move from the temple to your hearts, your lives. You talk about an intimacy. He meant business. The whole world got the attention of Christ. They spoke about him everywhere and his crucifixion. His disciples, the hymns that emanated from his life, the words that he spoke. And then when it was time for him to bow his head and dismiss his spirit, there was an earthquake. The rocks in the Holy Land were split open. Men were fearful. One of the soldiers said, this truly must have been the Son of God. You just now getting that? He was the Son of God yesterday, last month, last year. He's always been who he is. And he was slain before the foundation of the world. He just got your attention. He's always been God. Now you're looking at him like you've never looked at him before. This is why the Lord stops the mouths of the gods. Because they're loud. You think I'm loud, they're loud. They speak so loud you can't hear anybody else. But the Lord said, hush. I'm speaking to this people. I pray that you'll yield your life to Jesus. Surrender your life to God. Let's pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what you did at Calvary. And most of all, we thank you that on the third day you got up. You let men know there's more that's going to happen than you can suppose. There's more than just this life. There is the life to come. And if I saved you, then raise myself from the grave, I've got power to raise you up also. This is the greater love. I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So Lord, not only do we want you to save us, but I want you to heal us.
Turn this thing around, Lord. We've hospital beds in places they're not supposed to be. Heal us. Not only spiritually, but physically. Heal us. You have our attention. Now, Lord, touch our bodies and heal us. In Jesus' name, amen. joining our broadcast today. We pray that you enjoyed our service because you know it's the word of God that will carry us through this season. So our prayer is that the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our very souls, has touched your heart today. If it has touched your heart today and you desire to contact us, please call us at 614 267 8076 or at graceapp.com forward slash contact us because it's the very word of God which is able to save our souls and carry us through the strenuous season of our lives. If you would like to support Grace Apostolic with a financial contribution, you can make a tax deductible donation today one of five ways in person at any one of our services, by mail. You can send your donation to 1743 East Lakeview Avenue, Columbus, Ohio, 43224. Online, visit us at www.graceap.com forward slash giving for secured online giving. Givelify. Download the Givelify app on your mobile device and search Grace Apostolic Church, Columbus, Ohio. And Cash App. Download the Cash App on your mobile device and send your donation to Money Sign Grace AP614. We thank you for your contribution to Grace as we continue to carry out the Great Commission of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the nations. May God richly bless you.